Hello, everyone. I hope you had a good lunch and um, and we are going to start our lab session. It's um, let's start. So this is a Creative Common Agreement, and uh, we are going to do our two-hour lab session. I'm going to uh, just uh, briefly go over the overall what's the uh, arrangement. So um, um, so um. We are going to have four different tasks, and uh, um, one is uh, um, going to be a simple or one factor statistical analysis, and uh, another one is raw stack to processing, then uh, functional analysis, basically um, including uh, um, target and untargeted. So basically, our two hours is uh, dedicated to this. I'm going to show the timeline. And the last one is if uh, someone is really advanced and want to explore, you can explore the complex metadata um, stuff. We don't not uh, a demo for the last one because uh, it's advanced also we have the um, we have the um, tutorials. So here's a um, breakdown of the uh, four tasks. So first one we are going to be um, a one factor and this is about 45 minutes. Uh, basically it's a 15 minutes followed by uh, half an hour demo, uh, half an hour practice. Then we are going to focus on a targeted uh, data analysis. Uh, then it's uh, spectral processing and are targeted. So this is uh, almost uh, um, everyone is uh, starting with the demo and followed by uh, hands on um, uh, data analysis. So we are all going to be synchronized and uh, all do the same thing. So the demo going to be shared with everyone and um, uh, you're going to do hands on practice with some questions okay and before we start i just uh, briefly introduce the main uh, framework for metabolic analysts so make sure you have some feelings and why something is doing in that way so um, metabolic analysts it was designed to be um, scalable and uh, we we do separate in the raw data processing from the web-based uh, interactive statistical analysis and uh, uh, cloud and the browser so basically raw data processing in a cluster local and the web application is uh, uh, using the cloud uh, in the server side and the visualization on the browser. And we spend a lot of time offloading that question to your brain. So basically we want you to think and we found that it's kind of um, intermediate, not overwhelming, actually get people learning and feels, uh, uh, feels engaging. So overall that we in, in using uh, all the things we can mobilize and to try to uh, um, reduce the computing and increase the learning. And metabolic analyst, we actually try to balance both targeted and untargeted. So we're talking about the statistical um, from this morning. So the version one is statistical. We continue to enhance throughout all the version two, version five. Uh, statistical analysis mainly is neutral. So it just need a data table. And uh, version two or three basically targeted and we just to do uh, how to understand in the functions and biomarkers. And uh, version four and five is mainly on uh, uh, untargeted. We really want to get the, uh, the targeted, uh, uh, untargeted both can be done in a coherent framework. And uh, we just, we currently, we are working on actually MS2. Overall, so we want to do a, a annotation, untargeted, untargeted, hybrid or semi-annotated, more or less get the same conclusion uh, or using the same workflow. And uh, metabolic analysis is actually working very well. And you can see this is a uh, last year. Um, yeah, uh, we have almost um, every day we have uh, close to three to 5,000 users. And a lot of them through repetitive users, we have a lot of the job analyzed. So um, um, uh, it, uh, it is well maintained. And today's topic, we're going to use this um, uh, for uh, modules. One is raw data. Pro uh, section one is uh, under uh, uh, single factor statistical analysis, and uh, then we are going to move on. Uh, how do we do the um, functional analysis? So all of this uh, uh, will be using the data we generated yesterday. So section three and four will be on on target. So we are going to use a new data. So every one of this will you're going to have the link either using a GitHub or Slack, you should see that even from slides, okay? We're, we're going to have a demo for that. 
And uh, this is what I mentioned about uh, protocols. We do have very detailed protocol covering all the modules, uh, about 12 modules. And uh, here is the uh, more latest uh, nature protocol on the untargeted and with a metadata, complex metadata. So we are not uh, uh, going to do a demo on that, but uh, if you're interested in that, and uh, just uh, follow the protocol. And uh, if you have questions, we are more than happy to answer. And uh, and uh, uh, before you start, I would like to mention is so do not open multiple tabs. And if you do that, you are going to overwrite your result each other. The reason is that uh, each a browser have a session and relate to your current state and you are, up, you are going to generate on that. So if you open a new tab and from the, another one, they are going to overwrite this one. So uh, the, uh, also another reason is you don't do multitasking, focus on your current work. Uh, most of the job will almost return within one minute. So you, you just re wait a bit, you'll get a result. So uh, interactive, focus on your task, do not multitasking, open multiple tabs, which uh, you're going to lose a clue and uh, you're going to see an unpredictable result. Another one I haven't mentioned is the Omics Forum. And uh, you can use Slack, which is uh, more or less uh, uh, for this uh, workshop. But if you have some questions you would like to post on the forum, it's going to be seen by everybody. And when we post the result and it's going to be benefit everybody, okay? This is the Omix forum. You can register with any of your emails using your real name or fake name, it's all fine. Okay, I'm done. Next one is uh, uh, Jessica going to give you a demo on uh, statistical analysis, also um, uh, tasks and uh, you're going to uh, finish. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to do the statistical analysis one factor, and I think we're supposed to be done this section by 345, and also we want to try and analyze all three data sets from yesterday. So um, I'll try to keep the demo brief, and then we'll see how far we get. So just so everybody's clear, once we start, when you go to Metabo Analyst, uh, this is the module that we'll be using, the statistical analysis one factor. So just to be clear there. And at this point, I'm going to just go directly into a demo. I'm going to show just the general single factor workflow in Metabo Analyst. Um, and I am just going to use built-in example data right here. But when you do the lab, you're going to upload the data that we processed yesterday. So just try to remember generally what I'm doing. And then those protocols that Jeff linked, I think those are part of the pre-reading. If you're really, if you're not sure about some, like which buttons to push or whatever, those protocols have a lot of information on kind of exactly what each method is and how they work. Uh, and then you can also ask us the TAs if you're not sure. But in general, the defaults should be okay, <laughs> except for the normalization, and I'll go through that. Um, so I'm just going to open up the example data to show you what it looks like. Let's see where it is. Can you see the example data <laughs> in Edmonton? I'm just going to keep continuing unless someone tells me they can't see it. So we always have uh, our sample name in the first column. Then we have our single one factor categorical metadata in the second. And then we have all of our concentrations of each of the metabolites here. So each column is a metabolite and then all the values are in each of the cells. It can also be arranged the other way. So you can have the samples in columns and the metabolites in rows, and that's all fine. You just have to tell MetaboAnalyst what you're uploading. So I'm going to just, and you can see that here, right? It's, you just have to tell them what you have. So I'm gonna leave the first one selected and I'll click submit here. Um, Zhu Chung just checked Metabo Analyst, and I think we have already 100 people using Metabo Analyst outside of our workshop right now. So uh, if things are a little bit slower, that's probably why. So if there were missing values in our data, this button right here would be, it would be possible to click it, and then there would be a whole bunch of different methods for imputing the miss missing values. This data set doesn't have any, so it's not available, and we'll just click proceed. Hmm. Okay. So again, I'm just going to show you on the left here on this panel. This is where you could go back and look at the missing values. Since we only have a few metabolites since it's targeted, by default, we don't filter any out. But if you wanted to apply a filter, you would click this 
it would take you to the data filter section if we had a thousand or more. And if you want to go back and filter your targeted data, you can click that. And if you want to exclude specific features or samples, you can click this data editor button. But those are sort of advanced options that most people don't use. So we go directly to the normalization page. There are three different kind of sections in the normalization page. Um, we can normalize our samples. So this is sort of where we're trying to make the overall sample distributions comparable across our whole data set. There's the data transformation. The most common one is to apply a log transformation. And this is usually necessary so that your features are roughly normally distributed. And so I almost always select normalization by median and log transformation. Um, we can normalize that and then look at it. And so you can see here before normalization, this is looking at a bunch of metabolites. All of these distributions are very right skew. And after we applied the log transformation, they're all approximately normally distributed. So this is what you wanna look for. It's also always a good idea to click this view result just in case your data was already normalized before you uploaded it. Then it would be very clear because the before normalization would look like these nice box plots here. And we don't wanna double log transform our data because that's just a little bit weird and harder to interpret. With the sample view, we like to see this, that all the distributions are roughly comparable to each other across the whole data set. Okay. In this case, I haven't auto scaled it, but you can. If you wanna do PCA analysis, it's usually a good idea to auto scale. If you want to preserve your actual concentration values that you worked so hard to quantify with your targeted assay, then if you auto scale, you're losing that information in your results. So it, it it's really a preference. Neither is wrong. It just depends what you're doing and what you want to use the results for. So I'll normalize this here and then proceed. Now we're at all of these statistical analysis tools. There are a lot here, so I don't have time to go through all of them. But the most common ones would be to perform the univariate statistical analysis, like a t-test. It's a good idea to perform some dimension reduction like PCA analysis so that you can see like the overall distribution of samples and if there are any outliers, what the main patterns are. Um, and then there are lots of other options here for generating different heat maps and network diagrams um, and all of the ones that Jeff covered in the, the, the analysis or the statistics and module before. Um, I usually start with PCA so that I can get an overview of the data then I usually do the univariate analysis, and then I usually follow that by some of the more complicated heat maps um, and network diagrams. So I'm not going to go into any of these right now because we have so many data sets <laughs> to analyze. I'm gonna hope that you can just try and do this yourself. Um, so just to go back to the slides quickly, When you are uploading your files, since you won't be using the example data set, this is really the critical starting point. Um, so it'll be this first plain text file. You can leave all the defaults, so concentration selected, samples in rows, and then you'll choose the files that you download. The Metabo Analyst URL is here. All of the data from yesterday are on the course GitHub page. So you can find that in the Slack channel if you go to the pinned section or if you just have that pulled up. There are three different data sets. Um, I'd suggest you just choose a random one because I'm doubtful that everyone will get through all three. <laughs> um, so if, if we cho everyone chooses just a random one, we should have everybody touch each data set. Um, for each one, you should just try and upload it, filter it, and process the data. You can try out different normalization methods and see how that affects the distributions, like I showed, how you can perform different methods and, and view the results afterwards. I suggest that you pour, perform some dimension reduction, like PCA, um, and then do at least one statistical analysis, like the t-test, and make sure that you download the results, because it's optional to use that in the next section when we do functional analysis. So when you're doing this, if you if you have um, experience with Metabo Analysts, this is a pretty simple analysis, so you might get through all three. And in that case, um, just try and find which data set has the most differentially abundant metabolites. And when I analyzed all the data sets yesterday, I found that one of them appears to have an outlier sample. So if you can try and find that, <laughs> that's a good goal for the lab. So I think everyone can start now um, and 
we will just go around and help and reconvene uh, in half an hour. Um, so uh, from Montreal side, we just uh, share some of the tips. We noticed that um, at GC Autofate, we have a lot of the missing values. So if you uh, upload, uh, there's a missing value imputation or estimation, you can uh, uh, click that missing value and uh, using default to um, uh, uh, replace with the lowest detection limit, basically one fifth. So um, after that step, and uh, you will be able to visualize your data after normalization, because I think uh, when you have a lot of missing values, it uh, probably causing some issues uh, for uh, visualization in the normalization step. So uh, that shouldn't change that PCA result, yeah. Okay. Edmonton and Montreal, I think it's time to move on to the next section. So I'll just give everyone a second <laughs> to kind of stop what they're doing. Um, I was going to show, I'm not sure how many people managed to analyze all of the data sets. Um, does anyone know which data set had the most differentially abundant metabolites versus the least? Did you take notes of that? <laughs> yeah. Okay, that one had the most. Yeah, so people here are saying that for them, the sheep one had the most, and I think the sleep apnea one had the least. And I think the LCMS lung cancer one was in between. At least that's how it was when I analyzed it last night. That slightly depends on the normalization methods that you use and things that can change a little bit. Uh, but I think the differences were pretty big, so it should be consistent. Um, so yes, I am. Can they? Okay. D is there a note on the Slack that they can't hear me? Okay. <laughs> That's Let's good. Yeah. Um, the question, which data set had an outlier sample? That one ended up being kind of a trick question. <laughs> it had to do with the GCMS data. That one had a lot of missing values. Um, and if you went in and selected different types of missing value imputation methods and you did or didn't auto scale your data when you normalized it, you could have some outliers in the PCA. And that's sort of normal when you have missing values because different approaches make different assumptions about why the values are missing and why they aren't. And auto scaling can really impact whether a few metabolites really influence the distribution of samples on the PCA scores plot. Um, so if we had more time and maybe at the end, we can go through it and I can show you exactly how we can find that one outlier. It's not really a real outlier. It was like created by data analysis. So that's why it's important to look at the PCA plot because it helps you see if everything went properly. And if you saw that outlier, you could go in more detail and look at the values and make sure that it's, it's real and not just created by your processing method. Um, the low one okay so now we're moving on to the functional analysis of targeted data um those are these two modules right here the enrichment analysis and the pathway analysis that jeff described earlier in the functional um, lecture um, i'm going to exit out and go back and just kind of click through some of the modules quickly we're only going to be spending 15 minutes here. So I think this is really more of an opportunity for you to play around with the different tools and then ask the TAs um, questions about things that you're unclear about how they work. And we'll be monitoring Slack too here. Um, if you had your results from last time, if you downloaded the statistical analysis results, you can copy paste the list of significant compounds from there and upload it to the modules, or you can upload the whole tables through the concentration table upload. So I'm just going to show you using the example data in Metabo Analyst right now. Um, all right. So again, these are the two modules right here, the enrichment analysis and the pathway analysis. So for both of them, 
you can either upload a list of features. So here in our example data, it looks like this. Or we can upload, um, here we can upload our whole table. So this would be uploading the same file that you were just working with. And so again, you're gonna leave the categorical classification here, compound names. We're looking at metabolites and not lipids and the samples are in rows. And then you should be able to choose the same tables and upload those. Um, I'll show you what it looks like just with an example data here. You will have to do the processing again. This shows, there's an additional step to show you how well the compounds map to the databases in MetaboAnalyst. This is important because if it was different and it doesn't have a match, then it'll be excluded from the analysis because we have no way of mapping it to all of the libraries inside of the tool. So here you can see it's the same, same thing and then proceed. And so then here's where you can choose the different databases. Um, right now, the simplest one here is to use all the compounds in the selected library. If you're uploading a list of compounds, it's a good idea to upload a reference metabolome based on your analytical platform. So I'm just gonna show you what that looks like. It means uploading a file that's just a list of all the metabolites that you measured that are in the, the kit that you used. When you're doing the concentration table, it doesn't matter so much because you're uploading the full table of results so it already knows. But if you're uploading just a list of compounds, including that background can help give you more accurate functional results. So I'm just going to show you that here. You can try get that working when you're doing it with the example or when you're uploading the lab data. Um, but if you just want to get an idea of the libraries and quickly get a look at what the plots look like and how to interpret them, you can just leave the use all the compounds in selected libraries so you can get there faster. But for your own research, I'd recommend figuring this out with the reference metabolome. Mm -hmm. All right. And so then these are these are some of the plots that you can get. Um, there's a lot here. There should be some help tips and things, and there's lots of information in the protocols about all of these. But one thing I just wanted to highlight is this details here. This shows you right here is the list of all the metabolites that are in that pathway. And the ones that are in red are the ones that were in our data set. So this is really showing like how much coverage your targeted panel had Right. If there's several thousand metabolites in keg, for example, and there's only 100 metabolites in your targeted kit, um, this is the type of coverage we usually expect. So we're not going to have all pathway metabolites if we're only measuring like 100. So this can give you an idea sort of of how much you trust these pathway results. Like if a pathway has 200 metabolites, but you only have three or four in your data set, um, you should really take that into consideration when you're thinking about your significant results. It's less of a it's, it's less to think about if you have a much larger data set with more metabolites. Um, and if you're used to gene expression data analysis like transcriptomics where you have a lot of very well annotated features, um, it's a different story. Okay. Um, for the lab, uh, you can again take your concentration tables, upload them here and try play around and then ask the TAs any questions to try and get it working. Um, just to share some of the common questions uh, from Montreal and uh, also with uh, Edmonton. So for functional analysis, uh, we have um, enrichment analysis and a pathway analysis. So um, for the enrichment analysis module, uh, we have the metabolite set library and most of them are based on human. So because of disease related, a lot of this. Yeah. Oh, hello. Yeah. Oh, hello everyone. And um, let's, uh, I would like just to uh, mention one thing. It's a common question from Montreal side. It's about the 
enrichment analysis library, which is uh, the library is mainly collected with human studies. So if you uh, data is from the ship, and you can still use some pathway library because uh, mammalian metabolism is uh, similar. But as David mentioned, we need an organism specific library and to be more accurate. Um, but uh, this is if you want to try, you can try the 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 um, enrichment set, especially uh, uh, the pathway set on the top. But if you're doing a pathway library, we actually have the um, the more specific organisms based on the uh, CAG and SMPDB. So you will have a more list. So if you have a, uh, you, you, if the organism is not there, you choose the closest one, okay? And over long term, if we do have a, you do have a pathway library there and you just email to us, we are able to add in that one, okay? This is mainly designed for uh, on target global metabolomics. So in this section, we are going to still use the metabol analyst. Uh, you can use the same URL and go, got the data uh, from the building uh, example one. You don't need to download it. You can try to use the link just beside the uh, option. I can show you a little bit later and try to use it. So it's better to use the building example directly. Uh, so for raw on target metabolomics data, we are going to uh, demo uh, raw spectral data uploading and the integrity checking, and also do the data processing with the auto-optimized workflow and do some demo on the result visualization. So now let's go back to the uh, website. So this is the metabolic analyst. For the LCMS spectral processing, we are going to use the top module, uh, the first one, LCMS spectral processing. Simply click it, we are going to this module. So basically uh, we accept the uh, all open source raw spectral data format, including MDML. MD XML, CDF, and MD data. Uh, user need to zip it first and create a, a metadata uh, for the raw spectral files and add, upload them uh, together with the zip files. So they can uh, click select and select uh, everything together. Uh, here in this uh, demo, I'm going to show you with the building example. So this is a very simple, quick demo on the uh, data we are going to use. So we have um, around 10 samples. Uh, each of them have four, uh, four CD. This is a disease, uh, corn disease. It's an IBD uh, data phenotype and also healthy control. We have two uh, quality control, QC, and this is the uh, metadata. So this, uh, uh, on target metabolism data is very small. We are going to use it to do a quick demo. This is also for learning purpose. Here we can directly click submit because we have already selected the first example. Click submit, we are going to submit the data. You can also download the data and use the uh, upper uh, select, select a button to uh, upload your data, but it's not recommended. You will be queued because we have a lot of users uh, in our server. So we have to queue all jobs. Uh, but if you use the building example directly, you can get the highest priority to write. We can tolerate over hundreds of uh, uh, first example data to be run. So it's better to try the building example. If you truly have some interest or you have some data your own, you can try after this workshop. So this is the uh, data integrity check page which will show you if the data is cent centroid or not. How, how about the size and the group information based on their metadata. If it's not, not centroid, you can also do the online uh, conversion from the button here. So we can click next directly. So here, this is the parameter panel. 
uh, user could use a default one. If they truly have some feeling and the knowledge on the parameter that they are going to use, uh, they can use the default one and manually ch change the parameters. If they are not quite experienced, they can use the auto-optimized option. We are going to uh, uh, optimize the parameter uh, for them. Uh, it will take a little bit longer than the default one, but it's super fast. Here, I'm going to demo use the, this default one because it's fast. You can try to use the default or auto-optimized later to compare the difference. Or just for learning purpose, you can use the auto-optimized directly. So we can click the submit job. It's going to ask you to do a confirmation. This is the last chance you can change the parameter. Once you click confirm, you cannot change it anymore. Here, uh, we have submitted the job. You can see this is the job is being planning and it's gonna to be uh, showing running very quickly. So I guess that we have a lot of jobs right now uh, and uh, over 20 or 30 from uh, out of the hour workshop. So it's gonna to take a little bit seconds. So we can just wait to see everything is working. Here we can see a lot of logs from our job. Uh, we just wait uh, quite a few seconds because this is a building, building example. It will be executed very fast. So when you are running your own data, you have an opportunity to create a job URL link here. You click this one, it will pop up a dialog. You can copy and save the URL because for the raw data processing, it usually takes uh, several hours. You can come back later by using this URL. Here, everything has been finished successfully. You can click proceed right now. Now we are going to uh, uh, see the result page from here. Yep. So here, this is the result. We have a PC visualization on the all features that we have detected. So this is a 3D PCA. Yeah, we can see the different uh, samples have been listed as a score plot and the different features that we can easily change to click this button to change it. This is a different feature that we have detected uh, from the example. And we can have also other figures, in intensity stats, retention time correction figure, uh, total ion chromatogram, uh, base peak ions, and also aligned base peak ions. So we can compare the difference uh, between them. Uh, so let's go back to the most important parts, the PCA visualization part. Here, this is the different features. We can double click the node here. Yeah, so when we click on node, it's gonna to show the these features in different samples. It will be displayed as a box plot. This box plot is interactive. You can double click the node uh, in this in the box plot. So it the specific uh, uh, extractive extract uh, chromatography peaks will be plotted. You can interactively uh, do this option. Uh, it the different um, peaks will be uh, plotted uh, in this figure. So you can see we have two samples here. Uh, you can also add more, uh, or you if you want to regenerate, you can just uh, simply click this one. This will be cleaned and you can regenerate whatever sample that you want to show. So here, this is the back, background. You can change it to the black to visualize the, everything more clearly. And you can change back to the uh, score plot to visualize the uh, samples here. This is the total ion chromatogram of the specific sample. If you show you the uh, highest peak in the different uh, uh, regions, 
And let's go to the bottom to see the result summary. Here in this panel, we are going to show you the uh, very brief summary on the uh, results, how many peaks, how many features, and uh, uh, some basic parameters. And here we have to also provide a detailed information on the samples you have uploaded and we have also processed. You can also click the button here to uh, to view the uh, total chrome toggle. That's going to be the same thing as the score plot. And also for the feature table, uh, you can see the different features we have detected. So there are going to be the different uh, annotations and the uh, M over Zs. So the uh, features that are sorted by according to the p values uh, from the uh, uh, based on the different groups. So we have also provided a putative IDs based on the M MS1 information. For example, this is the potential formula and the potential compound identification results. And also user could click the view button here to visualize the uh, same result as the loading plot uh, above. So you can still click around to see the results. So this is the basic function. And then you can go to download page to download the results or start a new journey uh, to, uh, to other modules. So I think this is time for you to explore. Oh, uh, <laughs> hello everyone. Uh, we almost uh, need to move to the next uh, uh, next uh, session. So we don't need to download the result from this um, raw spec processing. And this is just for demo. And uh, there's a uh, dedicated uh, to, uh, there's files you can, um, Use for the next uh, session for the untargeted uh, metabolomics uh, for functional analysis. So, um, uh, for your purposes, that uh, um, when you upload the raw stack processing, and uh, not only uh, for the question, not only you have the um, um, what uh, format and um, sample numbers, you can also upload uh, some um, how to say blank QCs. To help you improve, and uh, we do uh, intend in the future you can have MS2 if we generated from uh, poor the sample to help you do some annotation. But overall, that uh, metabol analyst is designed for uh, high throughput uh, data analysis uh, and uh, statistical analysis and annotation. Really, you want to very confident identify, and uh, this always you need to have an internal standard. Okay, I think. Uh, uh, a high throughput, high quality compound identification. You cannot really, uh, it's a more, how to say, best one is targeted approach. Okay. Zixiang, so, you want to start? Yeah. Yes, sir. Okay, now let me just uh, quickly answer these questions. So, what's the data format for uploading? Uh, yeah, it's a zipped file, cannot be MZML. It's a valid file, but had to be zipped the first. And uh, what's the maximum number of the spectra file uh, allowed? Yeah, 200, 200 uh, samples. Uh, what's the maximum allowed single file size? Allowed as many things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Edmonton, you can answer, give me an answer, someone. <laughs> No, I cannot hear anything. So I think I can continue. It, uh, the maximum size uh, uh, after the Z, after zipping is uh, 200 megabytes. So. Oh, so here uh, in my slides, there are a lot of uh, workflows uh, you can follow uh, even after the workshop. So I'm going to skip all of them, uh, go to the next session, uh, function analysis of uh, on target metabolomics demo. Here, uh, we're going to uh, use this module 
uh, functional analysis. This is the uh, used for on targeted metabolomics. Uh, in this section, uh, we are going to use the uh, uh, example two or example three. Uh, this is uh, both of them are uh, valid biological data sets. So you can still use the metabolomics website and use the building uh, example data two or example data three. In this section, we are going to understand the formats and option for data upload first. And uh, we are going to do the function analysis based on the global peaks. And then we can practice a function analysis based on the patterns of a heat map. So this is the two questions I'm going to uh, promote later. So here, um, let me go back to the uh, website to do a quick demo. Okay, this is our, our website. Click here to start. We are going to go to the function analysis. This is the module we are going to use here. Uh, now we can start with the, uh, we have two options. The first option is the peak list profile. User could upload a, simply a peak list. You can follow the different formats uh, according to the uh, example data sets here. Uh, we can simply click one. We we can see the data format is very simple. We have four columns uh, or three columns. Here uh, we can have uh, M over Z. Uh, the second column can optionally be retention time. We can have third column or second, second column here is a P value. And last column T score is also, is also optional. Uh, so user could easily follow the different formats uh, for the peak table, peak list here. Yes. Yeah, so the question for Montreal uh, is asking about the, uh, where the t-test and the, where the t-score and the p-value come from. So they should come from the t-test. So for the uh, functional analysis, we are mainly focused on the difference of the functional between two groups. Uh, we are going to do a t-test on the all features in these two groups and generate a bunch of uh, p-values and t-scores uh, listed, listed in the table. Uh, so, so that's uh, where the uh, p-value and t-score come from. Yeah. So the p-values are the most significant one. Why is that? Because obviously, values like this and the values are significant. Yeah. For for the oh yeah, the question is that uh the p-value many of the p-values are not significant uh over uh two point three two point nine or uh, even two point nine nine or something. So why the p-value is like that? So for this. This is a nice thing, uh, interesting question. Uh, for the function analysis, we are going to upload the complete uh, feature table or feature list. All features need to be included in the uh, in the uh, in the file. So that means the all features. Uh, it, it doesn't matter the is uh, statistically significant or not will be included in the uh, in the in the data table. And uh, to be uploaded for processing. I don't see anything. Is it good? I don't think. Or are you just a gas? I'm not saying all of those, but I didn't see like zero point zero zero four or zero point. Cryptopenics are sorted and found out. Yeah, yeah. So, a question from Montreal is asking about the p values in the example. You can open the download the data and open the uh, CSV file and sort it to see which one is the minimum. So it's really depends, depends on your data. You can have a lot of uh, very small p-values. Uh, you can have a lot of very large p-values. You can also set a different uh, threshold later. So here, I'm just uh, trying the first uh, IBD example data here by click the submit directly. You can also download the data or use the building example uh, directly for learning purpose. 
Here we are going to show the data in uh, integrity check results, how many peaks have been included and what's uh, mode and uh, how many columns in your uh, data file, which will be recognized directly and automatically. You click proceed, it's gonna to, uh, jump into the parameter page. Here you can select a different, uh, uh, you can set a different parameters for your processing. Uh, first one is the p-value cutoff. Uh, as we have mentioned, you can have a different uh, p-value uh, p values for your data. You can set a, a hard cutoff for the for your data sets. For example, if you, there are uh, too many small p-values, maybe you need to reduce the, these p-values as a very small value. If all the p-values are very large over uh, 0 0.05 or something, uh, you can set a relatively large p-value. So this is the really depends on your data. But here, uh, MetaBandist will analyze your data directly and give a, a default value based on the top 10 peaks, uh, only the top 10 peaks. Uh, yeah, top 10 percent peaks, sorry, will be uh, set as, as a p-value threshold here. And here you can use the GSEA together with Mami Chalk or uh, Mami Chalk only. So both of the uh, algorithms have their advantage and disadvantage. Uh, in brief, briefly, uh, GSEA is, um, is more sensitive than the small than the peaks uh, to the peaks. And here you can use the scatter plot only because you uploaded the uh, peak list. Uh, and you can also select the different uh, knowledge database uh, based on your biological context. So when everything is done here, I'm just using everything as default. You can click proceed. It's gonna to show the result as a scatter plot here. You can uh, click, click the node to see the potential heat of the compound in these pathways. And uh, uh, all results will be listed as a table. Uh, uh, so you can download the tables and the compound feeds and also explore the uh, result from the network view. So this is the task you are going to do uh, in the uh, coming 15 minutes. And I'm also now going back to the uh, homepage and trying to show you another function in this module in the peak intensity table. Here we allow users to upload a, a complete table, the same as the, uh, the uploading format for the statistical analysis module. Here uh, we can use the second example or third example. Uh, I want to show you a little bit on the format. So we can download the table directly and open it with the uh, Excel or something in your computer. You can see we have different uh, uh, samples uh, listing in the column and the different features uh, listing in the rows in the first column of the different rows. Here, uh, I have to emphasize the, the format of the uh, features uh, are formatted as uh, M over Z and uh, double on the score and the retention time. So we have to uh, format the table uh, feature uh, in this kind of format and upload the, uh, all the complete table directly into the, uh, this module. Here, I'm gonna show you the third example, malaria. This is a relatively uh, sim simple and uh, also being used by our nature protocols. So you can try to uh, also use this example and uh, try to see the results. Here, we click submit the data will be submitted directly. This is the data integrity check again, uh, show you the general information and uh, how many missing value and missing features have been detected. So we can click proceed. It's gonna show you, show you how to do the data filtering. Uh, you can filter uh, based on your needs. You can click proceed directly. Here, I would like to do the log transformation only. Uh, we can 
show the results. It's already nicely shaped. So let's click proceed directly. Here we have two options. The first is the scatter, scatter plot, the same as the, what, I have, what I have shown before. And the second one, we can use the heat map because here we upload a complete table. Uh, all features in all samples uh, have been included. So we have more information compared to the uh, simple uh, uh, feature, feature list. We can use this uh, a heat map to show something different from uh, the previous option. Here I click proceed directly. So the features will be displayed in the uh, heat map. You can use the, this panel to do a lot of processing. Here I want to show you, we can do the functional analysis based on patterns. Here I just do the feature clustering first. So here we can show, so we can clearly see the features that have been clustered uh, based on their intensities. We can select a certain part. And uh, here uh, we just uh, got this kind of part. Uh, and also we can build the different uh, uh, patterns together. Uh, here we have this uh, module, for example, I can I can select a, a, a part from this, uh, this module. So uh, the part I have selected will be go to the lower uh, panel, and then I can select uh, another pattern here. Here I have some features, want to, want to select these patterns. I can uh, just uh, use, the, use the mouse click and uh, select this, this part. It's going to be built below here. And we can use this one to make it to the focus view. So this is the part pattern I have selected. And I will run the function analysis only for this pattern. Click, uh, click here. Remove my panel here. We can click submit. So the function analysis based on this pattern will be executed and the functions based on this pattern that will be reported at this kind of list. You can click around to see the results. So this is a, a very quick demo. So you have around uh, 15 minutes, uh, 14 minutes to practice. So I'm gonna to go back to the slides. So here is the learning questions. So you can always select and uh, hand, uh, hands up. I can, we can go around to uh, uh, answer your questions. So uh, for this uh, session, you're going to use a building example to um, uh, to explore the functions, okay? And uh, you can also download the example in, in, in your local and upload again. So it's the same thing.
So a lot of these uh, um, examples can be directly generated from uh, statistical analysis of the um, LCMS spectral processing uh, if we do the t-test. So um, if we uh, for the interpretation, the best one is the um, two groups. So we saw uh, about uh, t-test, uh, bold change, and if you have multi groups, you can clearly rank by p-values and uh, do the uh, enrichment analysis. The thing is that. Um, interpretation will be hard just because you don't know multi-groups who's the uh, most uh, change it and how to interpret so you will get you if you upload that as interpretation will be hard but it's up to you so um hello everyone and uh, we are about to finish the lab so if you are not finishing, we still have half an hour break. So you're welcome to continue. And if you have questions, just um, Slack or post on the forum. And there's also, um, we have the tutorials and nature protocols. So there's a lot to do. And uh, so if you go home and want to continue and please feel free to do so. And, uh, and we are going to take a half an hour break and uh, start um, and the last uh, module on multi-omics. <laughs>